osteomalacia and rickets are very similar conditions. The only difference being is that osteomalacia occurs in adults and rickets occurs in children with growing bo bones causing bone deformities. So osteomalacia and rickets are caused by inadequate or delayed mineralization of osteoid in mature cortical and cancellous bone. Cancellous bone is the spongy bone. The etiology and biochemical manifestations are the same in osteomalacia as in rickets. The major cause of osteomalacia and rickets is inadequate dietary vitamin D and this may be compounded by lack of sunlight. Other causes include intestinal malabsorption caused by diseases such as celiac and Crohn's, kidney and liver diseases, anticonvulsant therapies such as phenytoin, inherited deficiencies of enzymes that metabolize vitamin D and phosphate depletion for example in someone taking excess antacids. Fortunately these days in the UK osteomalacia and rickets are rare due to much better diets. Having said that, the Asian community does have an increased risk of developing osteomalacia and rickets for two reasons. Uh, number one, pigmented skin reduces the amount of vitamin D manufactured in a diminished amount of sunlight. And secondly, chapati flour can interfere with calcium and phosphate absorption. So these days, it is the inherited vitamin D metabolism problems that cause a much higher proportion of cases of rickets and osteomalacia. Although it is the same process that causes osteomalacia in rickets, the clinical manifestations are a little different because rickets occurs in growing bones. So in rickets the legs are typically bowed, there is bone swelling at the costochondral junctions of the ribs and flattening of the skull. In osteomalacia there may be incomplete fractures of long bones and the pelvis. And these are called looser zones and Osteomalacia may also present with bone pain and muscle weakness. So what causes the changes in growing bone? Well the first thing is inadequate calcification of cartilage at the epiphyses results in cartilage continuing to proliferate without calcification and the long bones and ribs swell at the growth plates causing the typical uh, appearance of the affected bones. Epiphyses, by the way, are the parts of bone where the growth occurs resulting in elongation of the bones. Biochemical changes in the blood in osteomalacia and rickets include reduced serum calcium and raised alkaline phosphatase. And if you look at a bone affected by osteomalacia or rickets down the microscope, what you see is an, an excess of unmineralized osteoid or bone matrix. The main treatment for osteomalacia and rickets is vitamin D supplements and sometimes calcium and phosphate supplements may also be required. This is an undecalcified section of a bone showing features of osteomalacia. The purpley pink areas show calcification and these are surrounded by a much paler pinkish area and this is uncalcified bone matrix or osteoid. And this layer of osteoid is much thicker than in normal bone. And this is a special stain called von Cossa, and this demonstrates osteomalacia much more clearly. So the black areas are the calcified bone and the plum red areas surrounding the black are areas of non-calcified 
osteoid. And as you can see, it is much thicker than in normal bone. So this is the histological appearance of bone in osteomalacia and in rickets.